All right, guys, welcome back to round two, session two of Operation Nightmare. It's a uh, event, a one life event run by uh, the Squad Ops community. You should check us out at uh, squadops.gg. We run these events every Wednesday and twice on Saturdays. If you're interested, you should check us out at the website, uh, squadops.gg, uh, to take our basic training and uh, hop into the events. They're a lot of fun, as you saw from last round, which was a nail biter towards the end. The uh, US. Uh, Almost dropped the ball, and the INS almost brought it back from a 20 kill lead. And uh, yeah, it was down to like eight, eight US by the end, I believe, six, six or eight. And it already looks like the US is about to start their brief. And uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and try and listen in on this. I have not spawned. No, sorry, divvying up kits. Um, no, it looks like they're still divvying up kits. They're lining up to uh, do their brief. It would it would be a bold strategy to launch right into brief without at least seeing where oh, these cash cool. markers are because they're going to provide oh, Demine yeah. with some very no, valuable information to let him see that, for example. All right. So yeah, it's it's interesting that Demine's uh, not not launched into his uh, his command brief quite yet, or is launching into his command brief without looking at these uh, waiting for these markers to pop because he'll he'll get them here in a couple minutes and he's going to see that one of the caches in Echo Three is is not usable by the insurgents because uh, he'll get a marker between zero and seventy five meters away. Up oh, there we go. So yeah, we can see where the markers are now. He's got one marker here, so he can tell that that cache is is not going to be according to the operation rules uh, playable for the insurgents. And, you know, with that marker over here, it's it's pretty obvious where that one is. Like, you can tell that this building or this building are the only two real places the insurgents can be. So it'll be interesting to see if Demand modifies his plan, or if Demand modifies his plan, or if he, he rolls with uh, whatever he cooked up before he saw the marks. And try and take out that Lodgy as quick as they can. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Thank you, Burns. Okay. Let's get it going. It's a uh, pretty simple plan from the uh, the U.S. to start it off. He has a uh, the striker and a transport team. Going to go ahead and be a distraction up north and just cause a lot of noise hey, while the uh, other three platoon, or the other three squads are in. Should move from the south. Striker, if you yeah. put it down yeah. there at Delta 4, yeah. four yeah. 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 We'll have one five. We'll have a perfect yeah. line of sight yeah. on the uh, That's northern true. Delta Delta hill. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you can look all the way across. I didn't know if the cache was going to be behind that mountain, but since it's not, let's leave that striker there. Burns, you copy that? Sounds like the uh, uh, we're gonna go ahead and give you the uh, the operation overlay now. Just to go ahead and give you a quick update on uh, what this op's about and the the assets that the uh, the teams get to use. It's a U.S. versus insurgency insurgency op. The uh, U.S. assets include two ARs, a uh, two uh, assault rifle or automatic rifles, a grenade launcher, a medic. For the platoon, they get a single striker and a single transport. The insurgents get two automatic rifles, two light anti-tank kits, one scout kit, and one medic per squad, four discus for their fob, and vehicle scrounging, which include two two SPGs, two SPGs, a BRDM, and up to like four or five uh, discotechies. I forget how many are on this map. The mission brief for or the uh, the mission objective is. The, IN, or the U.S. have to clear out a high-value target. The high-value target is marked, is the uh, platoon leader marked or marked with the uh, G3, like he's carrying a, uh, the G3 rifle, and uh, and neutralize their fob, which has to be west of the uh, Charlie Delta line. And as Tony was saying, they have one location that they can uh, uh, they can choose up there in uh, the Charlie the Three. Keep that five sub and uh, it looks like they're uh, they're setting up defenses. Uh, the uh, U.S. looks like they're gonna yeah, try and yep, come in. Yep. They're gonna adjust their plan for yep. a little bit. They they were initially planning to send the striker and transport up north. We're all they're the gonna change that plan here. to bring that striker down to the south and use west. the range. 
that the uh, the striker provides with that crow system, which is the most powerful zoom in the game at this moment. That crow system is just amazing, being able to fire from uh, from long distances. They're gonna park it up on that hill. Northernmost risk by Delta Two. Mostly, most affectionately called Crow's Hill. And uh, they're gonna just park it up there and uh, just lay fire down from range. We're gonna go ahead and bring up the overlay for the uh, striker. It is a beast of a machine right now. It's the okay. it takes four four RPG shit uh, hits to uh, to destroy it. it. It's it's a monster. It's, uh, it takes four four RPG hits. It has the uh, crow's 50 cal system on it. It's got moderate uh, speed and maneuverability. It's it's pretty good on its speed and maneuverability, and it can carry a squad plus. Of uh, infantry, I, I I forget the exact numbers. Do you, do you remember the? Uh... It's uh, it's ten plus one. Do we get ten plus one? So eleven, yeah, eleven people. So a little, little bit of more than a squad. So probably like a, the squad yeah. plus command would be able to ride in that comfortably. Primary focus is take out that legendary. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring up the uh, SVG techie, which is the biggest counter to the striker on this map, I'd say. Just the uh, the amount of firepower it can bring against it. Uh, yeah, the, so those SPGs, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty weak. They're, like, you can easily get decrewed by just small arms fire, but just the amount of damage they can deal to these strikers, they can, they can deal with it in a matter of seconds. doesn't understand the intention. Is it possible, instead of dropping off the Yeah, it's, it's insanely fast, it's gonna, it's gonna try and get on its flank. It's really what you're gonna want from the, uh, the, uh, striker, or from the SVGs to get on the striker's flank. Because the diversion doesn't make sense if we're gonna continue pushing from that way anyway. So we'll just keep it back. Yeah, no, sorry, so the strike and the transport staying on that green fob mark. And then rest from there, we're gonna go on foot. And then, uh, looks like we've got a live time. Live time in, uh, right at 50 seconds, but live time at, uh, 49 minutes. Which gives the U.S. 49 minutes to assault this fob. Time is of the essence in this op, I'd say. Like more so than others, mostly because it's the insurgent slayer, and we haven't, we don't have mod support yet, and we can't really adjust the time. Yeah, I'm not concerned about it. No, that's okay. And uh, we're, we're they're, they really need to uh, move quickly and uh, efficiently to really get. And they really need to move quickly and efficiently to uh, to deal to deal with the INS uh, forces. Like uh, last time, the uh, D mine yeah, so was the uh, U.S. commander. This time, did they really good job of delaying the U.S. He only had to hold out no, another like three minutes before the game ended, and uh, would have been uh, successful. So time is definitely a factor that you have to uh, pay attention to. We're live, and we're live. Oh, Black Betty. Yeah, Black looks Black. like. Uh, Honestly, this this spot is less than ideal for the insurgents here, except for this nice little two-story building they have that looks like Jack's gonna hide in. Um, other than that, though, there's really just looking around. The U.S. is gonna use a, a spot called Crow's Hill, which, um, not as I learned this earlier today, not everyone understands. So Crow's Hill is this this hill right here in in Delta Four Keypad One. Back before the striker existed, the standard practice on the AAS layer of, of this map, Militia versus US, was to go park a Crow's Humvee up there, slap down a FOB and a couple of uh, vehicle repairs, and you could basically shoot anyone on the map in the in the city and off at the insurgents' cap points on the, uh, the south side. So it's it's a very powerful location, and if the insurgents don't stick to buildings and to, to kind of locations with concealment, they're going to get... Oh my goodness, there's a techie peeling out. That thing is... It's not going to live very long if that Crows gets up there. The striker has just arrived to, uh, to uh, Crows Hill. There's a full U.S. squad. There's a full U.S. squad about to push west into the uh, into the town. Hamley, uh, you can see in the, uh, the distance, hasn't been spotted by the uh, striker yet. And it looks like they're going to go vehicle scrounging. Command has so, eyes so, on a uh, yep, striker is already oh, engaging enemy scouts over at inside, a distance. Uh, Charlie Fort. Yep. Enemy scout is down. Yep. Checking like for SPG. Shooting at Burn Oh, Lodgy's getting this engaged. The striker. Oh wow. Is just oh, mowing people down going. already. Three. So Lodgy's on to fire. Hasn't Charlie even dumped three, supplies yet. There we go. Finally, supply dumps, but. Get rear 
it's questionable if they can even so make a second make run. Numbers, that's so an unfortunate turn of events. This, this, yeah, it's really. That's that's why I was saying the spot is uh, so unfortunate. It's it's going to be almost impossible to get these runs in. See, he's peeling off no now to the, the northwest, three. but when he comes back in, the strike will have another good shot at him if he gets too close. This this hill Copy. and the valley yeah, that it's overlooking are Row making going to make it very tough for the insurgents to actually put up a, a good defense. And to get logistics runs in, because that pros, as we just saw, can there. see right into the middle of the city and can definitely eliminate that logic if it tries to make another run to the uh, standard resupply. I don't think we log up anything, but we and it looks like which... Jack or LaRue is putting yeah, people up on, on this mountain. He knows that they, they have a strike. Like, it's it's a uh, it's a bold move to try and, and to try and put the US or to try and put INS in this mountain to try and provide any kind of overwatch because you have to know that that strike is going to have going to have the optics. It's going to have like going to be able to see you in these up here is going to be able to see you up here for sure and uh just wreak havoc on you if you as soon as you pick your peek your head up if you as soon as he uh spots you you're you're gonna it's not gonna end well for you but uh he's done it who's who's up here looks like a fire team size elements and uh we'll see if they're able to be useful it really looks like they're just gonna try and defend this northern flank All right, that's their uh, goal we got a trailer First right, contact, contact just uh, got three, made in three, terms eight. of infantry. Charlie Looks like three, we got maybe Sightless's squad engaging here. Oh! First GL just got popped. We got uh, two insurgents over here in concealment. Not really any good cover. They're, they're trying to crawl for these buildings. Looks like we got uh, a, a guy with a yeah scout and then some other rifleman. They're kind of going to crawl back here because... Well, they have five or six guns pointed at them, and they don't want to stay there. Pretty decent engagement range from both sides. It could go either way, depending on who's the, uh, the better shot. But the U.S. have people coming in to reinforce them, at, while the uh, INS look like they're they're sticking to their respective buildings, their respective areas. They're not gonna they're not gonna get much support, Dude, and they really just on your it doesn't side, look like they're gonna have a lot of ways out of this once they get spotted. There are only doors on the north. They can't they definitely can't go out this east door. They're gonna get spotted by the U S. If they go out this north, they're gonna be spotted by the uh, the U S. squad. Copy. On the I'm gonna keep watching it for now. So their their choices are either to sit there and hope they pass, which they've already been spotted. So they're probably not gonna see, or probably not gonna not clear. They're almost. Definitely gonna clear. Uh, sorry, game sorry game for the uh, awkward the double negatives and things like that. Okay. But yes, they're most definitely gonna clear out these buildings. Right, and, uh, down here. We can't keep the Inus just have to hope they can take as many out with them. Up, yeah, looks. This is kind of interesting. I'm seeing a lot of insurgent forces off in the northwest, and I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting. I think they're trying to keep the line of supply secure. Uh, that lodge is coming back in for another run now. We'll see if it gets lit up by the striker again. Love, go ahead, start your guys then. Uh, resupply. So it was an awkward location for the INS to. Uh, well, I mean, this was their only choice, but the, just this spot was just really awkward for their for their vehicle scrounging. The, the three best vehicles on this map, the two SPGs and the uh, BRDM, are on the far west side at the uh, at the end of the map, basically in a in a field. And uh, they just, they, they have, you, you basically need those vehicles. I got eyes on a red you motorcycle. You have to scrounge some kind of, uh, some kind of armor, some North kind of, uh, uh, some kind of asset that's going to allow you to deal with the striker. That's not, that, so you don't have to rely on your, uh, on your yeah. lat kits. Yeah, we got an automatic rifleman here. He's about to get ripped up in the face. We got three U.S. riflemen headed right for him. Uh, if he peeks, he's probably catching five or six rounds. Oh, he's opening fire. He shot first. Let's see. He he wounds one. Oh, no. Don't peek it, buddy. Take out your frags. He's, he's backing off, but he's about to get fragged now. Right click, right over the wall. It's up, and he doesn't even see it. Or hear it. He's dead. What an unfortunate turn of events for him. He shot first. He had, he had the upper hand. Oh. Bad nade. Just shooting at... Wow. Oh, and a bad rocket too. That's that's very unfortunate. Some missed opportunities here early on for the insurgents. So far, the U.S. is uh, up two kills. Yep, up two kills to up two, two kills six, to the one death. Thirty seconds. We'll get you your Overwatch shortly. 
Looks like the striker's trying to uh, reposition to a uh, better spot. It wasn't seen much in Grozo, which I think if he had sat there just a little bit longer, he'd have uh, been able to uh, provide some decent cover. Right, enemy but uh, these three, night maps are hard to... Uh... Enemy contacts are oh, wow, three, what was that? Three, uh, Krusty... Hmm. Not sure, but it appears that Krusty team killed that Turtle Guy. Are they insurgents or Americans? They I are think they, the US. U.S. have spotted this uh this INS group, the, these guys who were vehicle scrounging, I'd say. And uh, oh, yeah, they got friendly like... fired by a GL. These these guys vehicle scrounging got yeah, spotted by the up. U.S. and the GL yep. just fired just a Chase little too close. And oh, uh, got an insurgent uh... lone scout up here, up getting there, absolutely slaughtered by about six or seven people at the same time. He's still alive, but yep, nope, he's dead. That's that's Make the end of him. North. His body is sliding down yeah, the hill, limp. It looks like did he get anyone? Oh wow, he actually it looks like got uh, two uh, U.S. troops wait, before wait, they took no, him no, out. No, 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 and I think we have another one too, who also just wait, died, but for wait, some reason wait, was not no, showing no, up no, in the uh, little overlay. Yeah, so yeah he's he's dead too. So that buddy team's wiped out, but they take down looks like two U.S. troops. That's fair trade. It's gonna slow down that squad too, so that's yeah, probably not an advantage to the insurgents at this point. Right, Looks like uh, com for that command and squad one of they're they're moving well, to cut off their supplies. Oh, and the way Larue seems to be me. playing his uh his supply route is it's it's heavily escorted. Two discotechies and an SVG techie are roaming around, just making sure this uh this logic can get runs in. Just making sure that they, they're going to be able to put down some kind of defenses, get some barbed wire down, get some sandbags down, even get some of those uh, oil barrels, the Hesco wall equivalents for the INS down, which are a little more immune to the uh, Delta Four, keypad seven. The uh, grenades that, that are really going to help these uh, U.S. push into the uh, last, last compound. Yep, and it looks like up here we have Google Trex and his squad pushing directly into this kind of little valley here between these two ridges. Unfortunately for them, there is a full, well, kind of the remainder of that insurgent squad that they killed the buddy team from just waiting for them up here in this other ridge, so if they're not careful. Uh, you have engaged the uh, Lodgy escort. Oh, Google sees him. He gets his people down. The question is, do they see him? And, oh, the answer looks like yes. Here's on vehicle. Yeah, here's on vehicle west. Oh, Google heard the vehicle, it looks like. Not sure whether he saw those infantry. Weapons free. It's a great high point to Google. Charge the hill. Seemingly un- oh, oh, nope, he sees him, drops one. The other one edges over the top, to peek at him. rest of his squad starts to engage. Second insurgent wounded. Question is, will these two insurgents up here do anything about it? Are they gonna... Oh, the one's prepping a frag rocket. Oh, no. This might be the end of Google Trex. He's kind of debating, debating. Oh, this looks like he doesn't want to shoot it. Or he doesn't see the Americans or something. Frag goes out. Wounds a couple. This guy with the frag rocket is very indecisive. and... Bowfire on the far yeah, north hill, you, the watching these uh, U.S. push into his, his, uh, his teammates, and looks like they're content to watch. Right now, yeah, he just took a couple not shots. Not interested in, in firing this rocket. This is squad six. We're gonna get to your east. North up. I'm I'm unclear why he's he's six got the perfect. Oh, he's gonna die without even getting a shot off. That would be very unfortunate. Listening for bandages. Really just holding up uh, Google's push, but Google is already so close to the objective. They just they just need one in a uh, command to, uh, to catch up, finish sweeping through this area, finish cutting off the supply lines, which I'd say they've almost successfully cut off. They Interesting. He he's a dish nope, He's nope, now uh, he's shooting his AK, but he does not want to use those rockets. He's just running back now to uh, right, to, to the save. squad. We're gonna try and take this hill if possible. Looks like Google he managed to wound Google up. tracks. Let's see if he yeah. can uh, bandage in time. Okay, now we got the rocket out. Is he going to shoot it? Oh, his medic's dead. So he better, because no one's going to come heal him the next time he gets shot. 
Not clear that he sees anyone anymore, though. He had a pretty good shot earlier, but now no, they're all kind of on the side of a hill where it's difficult to find that, that dead space. And the striker shooting at him, too, so that's... Yeah, he may have lost the opportunity to pick up some kills with that rocket. Yep, looks like we got the insurgents falling back here. Uh, three casualties, and then they They're killed the about two U.S., so not the greatest trade for the insurgents there, especially because that, that ground is kind of critical. It overlooks the, the defense location. If the U.S. get up there, then... The insurgents are going to be fighting from the low ground, which you never really want to do. The insurgents are pretty saturated on the uh, the actual objective. They've got like upwards of like ten yeah, people on these on these points. Like that's a lot of people to put in like three to four buildings, and uh, we'll see if it pays off for them. They 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 were last round the insurgents were definitely able to hold them off when there was a lot in the buildings, but they were also able to delay by having people outside and if they just see this land up on the north so quickly and give these uh the oss foothold like that that may not bode well for them especially if they try and position the uh, striker up in that up on the uh, the north yep the u.s squads are now uh now engaging oh wow spg hits a rock uh we got the ins abandoning two of their techies here in the field and the spg reloading itself which is a, a pretty nice feature. I didn't know they had auto loaders on those. <laughs> yes, they're just laying into these uh, these techies on the north. There, looks like they're just trying to get them out. They're done trying to load them. Oh, nope, he's getting back in the SPG to load. But they got yep. one of the SPGs out, and the other dish techies looks like it's going to be in a more defensible position. All right, this I don't think they have any idea that there's a full squad on the west. They they're almost caught in a complete sandwich. One can get on the other side of this hill. Another SPG out, but it doesn't do much, and uh, instead of moving the techie out, looks like the, the gunner there is going to run straight to the compound. He's decided nice. it's, it's not worth it anymore. Another guy, though, is coming up, and oh, he's, he's going to walk right by it, too. They're, they're abandoning that SPG. And the other SPG is now abandoned, too. It looks like they're they're already going to harden up an Alamo in that compound, which is... Well, it's it's a, an interesting decision. They've spotted this squad on the west, so they now they they know that there's two squad there's two two fronts that they need to worry about. They're northeast and they're southwest. They're almost they're they're basically on either either of these uh, hills, and they're just basically they're free to fire on, letting the uh, striker get into a good position. This could be uh, very bad for them, considering they've decided to straight up Alamo, just abandon any kind of like. Fire, fire. Observation post that they had got before. Eyes on abandoned lodgy just in my southwest. They've got eyes on this, this lodgy, on and so they, they know that they're not going to be running any any more supplies there. What they have built is what they have, and it doesn't look like they're going to get any more. And uh, the squad on the west looks like they're about to push in. Going to just try and yeah. make their way down the hill. They've been they've taken a couple pot shots. They've had a couple pot shots taken at them, I should say, and. Uh, they're just going to get on the other side of the mountain and use the uh, the devil to, to get down it. Yep. Over here, it looks like uh, Sightless is called a halt to the firing for now, because you can tell that, that that compound, his saws aren't doing much against those those thick mud walls. He's trying to scan now, see if he can pick out some contacts for them to see, but uh, it's it's not clear okay. through the foliage that he can see very much. We're pushing they're, in real close. You know, they're getting ready to push up here, but... But it's it's just yeah, unclear what that uh, they can really get a three, good angle on it. They kind of got to wait for that north, that squad over there to the southwest west to the make their way up. Least, you know, and the there's still that sleeper really squad really out there for the insurgents down like south. This this squad is going to be very vulnerable to fire from over there when they go to actually push on the compound. Classic yeah. muff one tap from 200 meters out takes out a uh, Phoenix Overlord. <laughs> Look like oh. uh, one maybe right, two shots. I I go I say one. But uh, he, I think he shot twice just to be safe, and he uh, wow. he ducks down. That's yep. uh, a a smut for you. Much of anything. And then uh, a lone insurgent decides to shoot at Silas oh, oh. or Sightless rather, and uh, yeah, so that squad's now been spotted to the south. Uh, Sightless is calling for a GL. Who is um coming? I think. The command squad is about to run into a. Uh... An insurgent. The US right, his GL's, GL's, GL's almost today. up. Sightless so got the GL. Uh, He's bringing him up. You can kind of Calling the shot. This, uh, 
these two trees. Get away from there's a uh, fucking the dish. There's a fifty. The dish fifty cal dishka. Yeah. Steve, you can hit the oh, command squad. Oh, he's going, squad. going for the dead speech shot. No, 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 no. Two forty. Two forty. It's a black. U.S. Command right, the just gotten taken out. Yeah, the U.S. Command squad just got, uh, the U.S. Command just got taken out. They ran into a, uh, full squad on the, uh, south. And, uh, we'll see if they're able to, uh, recover from that or even, or even recognize that the command has gone down. Uh, if the, uh, squad leads are communicating, then, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll figure that out soon. But yes, U.S. Command has just gone down. All right, looks like that GL play didn't quite work out. Uh, the guy tried to drop it right in, but it just fell a couple meters short, and uh, a saw gunner died, unfortunately, trying to provide suppressing fire for him. So yeah, that, that disc is now opening up. It's unclear. Uh, Sightless might try that again, but he's going to give it a couple minutes, let it cool down a little bit before he, he goes after that disc again. Striker's also moving up. Oh, Sightless is calling out the... Uh, the HMG to Burns, although it's not, not clear that Burns can hear him over the sound of that ready. enormous gun. BRDM is one sixes position. Move three, three, oh yeah, zero. he's guiding this. He's guiding this thing in. This Dishka gunner is about to get a nice serving of uh, 50 BMG. Oh wow! Headshot. Dishka gunner down. The, uh, the crows does exactly Reloading. what it was intended to do and Continue just, just wipes them clean sides. in the head. I want to know about any SPG before they get to the me. The BRDM has been called out by uh, Google. If the striking just goes a little bit further over the hell, it's not able to see it. Up. Or it may be content just to sit on its current position and just overwatch this whole courtyard that the uh, INS are trying to defend. Whoever's got control of that striker, it is right in front of squad 6. It is in this Looking squad just six. To the, right of the... Yeah, are, the, yeah, the, in the U.S. are tightening the noose right now. It's uh, no eyes on you they're specifically. Just circling in on the INS. Boy. There's not a lot of uh, there, there's an outlier squad to the uh, southeast, but a majority of the INS are inside this one compound. but you may be able to get eyes on it. Going to Delta four one one. Six. I'm gonna be uh, hitting the field to your yeah, south. There's and ten INS in this, in this one building. Are you building. visual my tracers? I do the visual INS are shooting. The striker is shooting at friendlies, or at least in their general area. All right, local. I think I interpreting command comms right now. I, I believe Burns is shooting to get Google to spot. Tracers to guide in towards the BRDM. Like he's trying to sort of tell him where the BRDM is by firing and telling him, okay, go right, go right. I'm putting smokes. I'm putting smokes on it, close. I currently have eyes inside the compound of cash. I can remove if if necessary. Blue smoke marks exact BRDM position. There's a bunch of. There's a bunch of smoke rolling. Command request for striker to move westbound to get eyes on BRDM. If you move to me, you can get eyes on. Uh, push your commands down. Command is Cap down. It. We're moving. We're right, moving, 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 yep. moving west. Moving west. We're done. Just move to me. Yep. yep. They, they definitely, uh, they just recognized command is down. It's been yes, a good, like, like, three, three four three minutes. Of that smoke. Uh, they, they've Got marked the, the BRDM with smoke, so they have the exact position of the BRDM. Is it even man? Yes, it is man. And, uh, it's just gonna sit here, and, uh, it's sort of in a difficult position. I don't think it has any good sight lines. No, no, and it's about to die as Sightless has now called for the striker to come to his location. Oh, and well, uh, the BRDM is not long for this world. Yeah, the cat inside that smoke. Charlie Wait for three, it to start clearing. Up, oh my! Copy two three one. The striker has a high angle shot on the BRDM. All right, it's it's all, all over for that poor BRDM crew if they're still in there. And it, he's not even looking that direction. What? The striker Stryker has wait. turned off its engine for extra Still stealth. Two, two, nine. This BRDM is looking southwest. It's not even looking in the direction. Oh wow! Right on target. Yes, good hit, hit. 
RDM is down. No apparent dismount. Now, looks like the uh, US has to uh, deal with the uh, rest of this platoon. This squad on the uh, southeast, squad one, a uh, squad one on the uh, southeast, the INS, are pushing away from the objective. It looks like they're just going to leave this, the people at the, uh, at the FOB and uh, the high value target alone. To maybe try and set up at the uh, U.S. Expo location. I'm gonna guess that's where they're going. <laughs> yes, if I had to guess, Jax realized that it's it's over for him. The Expo is the only thing he can contest at this point. His compound is surrounded. There's a striker looking down at it. He's he doesn't have a lot of options besides try and maybe eke out some kills, ambushing the U.S. as they go to extract. Yeah. <laughs> wow, they have so they have a uh, Dishkateki on the second story watching south. That is a that is really good placement for the Dishkatech because it cannot be shot shot at by the uh, the striker or sorry Dishka Dishka in placement. Oh, Looks like the U.S. are just sort of preparing right now. They're they're in the preparatory phase. Just get get in, into position, smoke up, and push in. Is that two Dishkatekis? I'm oh, sorry, two Dishka placements? I, I, I thought I saw two sets of tracers. Yes, they have two Dishkas facing the south wall. Or south One wall high, one low. Yeah. The GLs dropped someone up there. Ready. All Who is of it? the smoke. Wow. And I think, two... I think LaRue was GL. I see a, yeah. a dead squad lead up here. Two, two bodies just dropped from those GLs, and they're pushing in. U.S. violence of action, they are pushing in, in through these smokes. They're not letting them have time to uh, do anything. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the Ruse corpse as it's, his head sticks into the wall and just feebly nods in death. Push, push, push. Go left, go left, go left. Right. Push with aggression, aggression, aggression. Kills that the INS are getting just don't matter. Like, uh, some of the, they just dropped two, two U.S. pushing in, but... With those two kills, almost 15 U.S. are able to get in and finish clearing out these buildings. All the insurgents target their own radio with Dishka fire, taking down a U.S. soldier, but it's it's not enough. The U.S. know about it now. Dishka gunner takes out his RPG. Muff bandit TK's a uh, rice mice. Oh goodness, this is uh this is a bad way for the insurgents. Oh, they're getting overrun. Push in, oh. they they gotta be aggressive. They've gotta continue to be cash aggressive. Cash got too. popped too, goodness gracious. This this cash when it goes off is about as big as a uh an IED. Did they actually get it? Not quite yet. That was someone just popped an incendiary grenade as uh Yeah. Fire superiority by the uh, U.S. They're oh just God, pushing so in aggressively. Or wait, oh! LaRue isn't dead. It was actually another squad leader who was killed. <laughs> well, he's not dead. He's going to be dead soon. Oh! That oh, yeah, squad it's... one didn't push towards the, uh... Didn't push towards the, uh... The, the expo location. They flanked the striker. And they were able to get two quick shots on the striker. That striker now has two more light shots before it's dead. Incredible. And... LaRue kills one, holding his last stand here. He gets another one, but he's wounded. He's almost out of ammo. The cache is also burning. Oh boy, if the U.S. don't get out soon, they're about to lose a few people. This thing is a, is a big boom. They need to get out of there. They've killed everybody in there. Now they need to go. These people may not have played Insurgency before. Oh, wait, did they get the cache, or did we have another miss? Oh my goodness, they missed again with the incendiaries. They are... Okay. <laughs> Okay. They got lucky. <laughs> that would have been a, an insane turn of events if they they had gotten the cash and then it explodes to kill. Uh... Oh, this disappointing. I really thought they got it that time, but. Dang it. 
I oh, and Muff goes down trying there. to take out the uh, last of the, uh, need a driver. the INS. We currently have Striker. We have wow. Contacts. Looks like uh, in, if through that all, the U.S. lost Andrew, quite a few people. I'd say like striker, 10, 12 people in that push. But with those 10, 12 uh, people, they were able to completely clear out that objective, get the high value target, Confirm and the then, then they started exfil, and they still got like a, I'd say like a four or five man advantage. Oh, they, they have much more than that. They have 2, Are these 4, in North 6, 8, 10, 12. They have, they have 12 to about 2 right now. Those oh, people on the, the yeah. north are all dead. People on the north are dead. Yeah, we've got our last two insurgents here. Hiding in a house, fearing for their lives. Which yep. they should, because there are Americans knocking at the door. They are, we'll they are they not can, long they're gonna clear. Us. We'll see if they clear out this building, or if they just... Cut their losses, break contact, and head towards the uh, exfil location. Yep. 21 minutes left. The U.S. U.S. has uh, handily accomplished their objective with. Oh, they're oh. being shot at. Well, one of them, one of them starts firing. So uh, it looks like these two. Ins oh, and he bleeds out. Yep. Red mist triggered. Bleeds out. King Jamo is. Wow. Uh, it's Truth Realm and Mikeu on the uh, INS. This this is going to be the better uh, end for them. Yeah. That was a that was a very premature shot there. They're gonna they're gonna pay for that if the U.S. decides they actually want to take him down. He's peeking out again. Wow. I, I don't know. It's interesting to see whether the U.S. will prioritize wiping out every last insurgent in the city or just or just leaving because they can just leave. They've accomplished their objective. They can go exfil and make the up. Oh, yeah, it looks like what they're gonna do. It looks like they're going to do a little bit of both. They've diverted four, four to that area. Oh no, he just left. Yeah, they just left. Cut their losses. There's no, there's no reason to stick behind. Gonna, they've accomplished their objective. They killed the high value target. Now they're going to exfil. Yep. Yeah. Burns says time to go. He's, uh, he's very much done with this. We're worried about. See, I, I was going to suggest uh, like. Suggest that they, they they just all load up on the strike and get there. But uh, Burns brings up a good point. If they if they run over a uh, mine, oh, an un unsuccessful IED. Yeah. If they run over a mine while they are all loaded up in that striker, that's so it's game over. They did set something on fire. I wasn't aware you could do that with the ID, but they've oh it was a bike. They blew up a bike uh, that was stationary with an IED. Maybe that's... maybe they was gonna be a V bed. Possible. Load that up. It's not a bad idea, but they just never got to use it. Yeah, but now they are they are heading. Looks like south southeast. I think they're probably gonna try and go down the, get on the hill above the U.S. extraction, which is uh, well, if the striker gets there first, that's gonna probably end about as terribly as you'd expect. It's just gonna snipe them from 200 meters out in the face. But you never know. They, they might they might show up a little earlier and just because Burns right is taking this very cautiously. I remember the last time I had to, to do one of these run out of the city extracts, I piled 17 people in a transport truck and just just drove right out of there, which one, probably great. wasn't the Can smartest idea, but it did work. Burns is definitely playing this a little safe, which is understandable. He, he wants to uh, finish this strong. He doesn't want to lose any unnecessary lives. Yep, coming in clear. As he uh, pushes out. Yep, that's true. I suppose back when I back when I did the transport truck rush out, mines didn't exist. Which Burns is definitely cognizant of the fact that if he loads up a bunch of people in a truck and tries to move it somewhere, and there's a mine on the road, then he could very easily turn a clean win into a disastrous but very amusing loss. Got these, yeah, these two insurgents still running here, you know, got their got their binox out, just cruising along. The striker is, is also moving. It looks like they've actually managed to head the US Strikers off. Striker's gonna bit push here. east the compound one. Can I get you to the Slow south but end steady of the striker? On both sides. FX one thousand, can I get you to the we'll southeast of my striker? Southeast of my striker. Oh, right there. Some sort of comms. Thank you. Trying to just maintain security on the strikers. It has taken two lat shots already. They don't know that there is no way for the uh, insurgents to answer the striker at this point. 
that they're still going to play it cautious. They're still going to make sure that that thing stays alive and is able well, to I provide s- adequate cover. Yeah. There is one way. If if the insurgents were so bold as to go and plant a mine directly under the striker, it would in fact blow up. It would just, uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't be pretty. One of them would you, you die when that happens, but you can in fact do it if you you can use your mind right, like a, a sort of super. Storm the top of this hill and then check out. It just eyes. doesn't well sure that the transport is also. And I don't clear. know if uh, if the scout here is actually placed his ID yet or, not, or his mind yet or not. The striker uh, will be following. I see a few yellow X's on the map, but it's not clear whether any of those We're are trusting actually. Trusting on you guys He's for definitely Overwatch the ID as much as possible. We saw that motorbike pull up, but the mine is still unaccounted for. At least for now. Playing it slow and cautious. He's got a wide security on his uh, striker, mostly to the, the southeast. Bridge. Mostly just uh, yeah. in the, in directions that they're moving. They're expecting contacts at the actual uh, expo location, which is a uh, safe to assume that at this point they know their high value targets dead, and they've, they 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 both know where they need to move to uh, finish this off. And yeah, expected contacts there is probably right, because at the pace they're going, the uh, the insurgents are definitely going to make it there first. Because they are taking it nice and slow and steady, and the insurgents are they're, they're feeling the crunch a little bit. You know, they know that if they don't get there first, that they really have no chance of doing very much, because the U.S. have a significant numerical advantage, which, you know, they can't tell, but you, you kind of get a gut feeling for these things usually, and if you're two people left, you, you generally know that things have gone pretty badly. Especially because they, they, they know the striker's still up. Uh, it's it's unclear if they have a plan. I, they, they have a plan with this transport. I didn't actually catch what they, they were saying, but it's something. They, they're loading people up into this transport, and they're going to blitz them somewhere and sort of yeah. distract any remainder I, INS. It's interesting. I'll draw shots. You take them out. Oh, Burns is saying oh. he's going he's gonna to do this as... Um, Burns is a fighter hey. pilot. This is the time-honored tradition of uh, wild weasel runs. <laughs> So he's going to fucking bait. drive on in, out. he's right going to let them hit, shoot at him, up. and then, you know, let, the, uh, let them take him out. A firm, continue pushing south. The, the, the only pushing way south this works out, though, is if the striker is in position. Or striker. if they actually shoot at him, which would be yeah. exceptionally foolish. But, you know, they, they might take the bait. They're, they're pretty scared. Oh, they're about to run into all the U.S. contacts anyways. If anyone's... Oh, nope. No one sees nope. him. They sneak they're, right they're in. get in there. Oh, oh no! Nope. Nope. Someone's um. Oh boy! Oh, they got they got the techie up. But are they gonna do anything with it? That's kind of unclear. Northwest, most corner of the compound. One guy. They only saw one. Here. We now have the uh, the last stand here. Burns and visual, company looks like, uh, trying some to sort move of on in. Located on the oh, northern wall. Burns sees the disc gunner. Oh no! Does anyone have nades left? Smith? He's calling for nades, but it's unclear if anyone has them. There's a lot of smoke and a lot of nades they used to uh, right, stand by. to get into the uh, last compound. Right oh, he the they guy with him has a grenade, so that's uh, right on the other side of this wall. This might be a double can, kill. So there's zero because uh, fall time. Straight up. It's right here, right here, right here. Oh, no, 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 that's the wrong wall! No, there we go, yeah, burns, burns, I want you to go on an overhand if possible, but I think you're already too late. You may have to drop, jump. I'm gonna need another nade. Oh, there we go. And it's up, and it's over, and it's definitely gonna kill the guy on the ground. Oh, it kills them oh, both! Oh, I got both. Oh, I heard it oh dear. What a, what a grenade for the end. Oh, my. That's, double, that's, uh... Double kill for the end. Bye-bye. Wow, what oh another action-packed game. This one didn't go full yeah. time, but just the aggression that the uh, U.S. showed to uh, push in uh, into the uh, main compound was just game amazing. Guys, yeah, that was... Good job. That was fun. What a, what a oh, freaking... Huh? That was a heck oh, of an yeah, end. That, awesome. that, that compound assault was ridiculous, man. I can't wait to see that. It was amazing. It was great, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a freaking clip of the century. I, I, I that, no that ammo left. at the end, though. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, Burns, that end, that, uh, 
the super lucky that you had somebody with a grenade for that. Uh, there was a double kill for the end. You had a, uh, I think it was. Oh, uh, was it? Nice. Uh, Ruth Rum on the Dishkateki and uh, uh, Maiku, I believe. Uh, it was just right next to the Dishkateki. Just what was your what were your thoughts on on leaving the comp like the, after that successful uh, breach that compound breach with just in mass using your smokes your grenade and then realizing you got the high value target like after that what were your thoughts on getting everybody out and uh, and home I guess towards the expo? Well, we took a good uh, ten second pause of celebration there and then immediately went back into phase one of oh crap we need to move and we don't know where enemies are so. It swaps into a different plan of protecting the striker. Hopefully the striker can win us the game. We just need to make sure that thing doesn't blow up by any means, whether the mines or other lats. Yeah, you definitely definitely played it really slow. You had a great uh, great security. You, you, you maneuvered the, uh, the remainder of your people around to uh, get them in uh, where you, you felt that you needed to uh, have, have eyes on, basically. It was uh, very well done. I will say it was fairly non-standard having that uh, little transport trick that we were doing. I was using that to get a little bit higher eyes into the compound to see anything and draw some fire. But uh, yeah, that was, uh... I wasn't able to see anything until the saw actually opened up on any position, called out the target on the northern wall. Got my binos, saw the dishka or some sort of position there, and we ended up executing with that frag. Yeah, we, we saw that you were making that little wild weasel run. We were kind of... That was an interesting idea, and we, we thought it was going to... Yeah, be probably successful if they were they were silly enough to shoot at you, which they, they weren't quite that silly, but you still got them in the end. Uh, we're, joined with, uh, we're joined with we're uh, joined with one of the uh, commands, Larue. Um, what were your uh, thoughts for that uh, second round? Hey everyone, um, second round. It was uh, initially when I first saw our location, it was like 50 50. Uh, it was kind of close to the middle of the map didn't get too too much time to set up but my basic plan for it was almost set a triangle of defense around it and then have a uh, a moving element squad of technicals to see if we could pick off the striker yeah it looked like they were able to um interrupt your supply lines pretty early on uh, it, it was their the, the uh, opposing team's uh, command well, how did you uh, adapt after that after you realized you, you basically lost your uh, your supply line so after we lost the first supply line, uh, I made the call. I made the call right away to try and get to the second secondary supply line, which was to our direct west. And once they cut that one off, I just gave the call Alamo. Let's try and get the squad off the hill, and let's just uh, try and grab hard corners in the compound. It it almost worked out for you. They were up a, a, a fair amount of uh, a fair amount of. Uh people at the time that the uh, the initial breach was went right before they they smoked up and uh, and uh, pushed in but as soon as they pushed in they they used the uh, violence of action and they just they were able to get in there and uh, they they lost quite a few people they lost upwards of like 12 people in the, in the push but they were able to uh to finally get in there and finish you off and it was a it was a great uh, compound assault on their part mm -hmm. um what about the uh, the the first round your your rear security really really pulled it out for you they they stopped the uh the spg rush they stopped google's uh google's flank uh, there's a squad in the uh, the town that y'all that y'all walked over initially but your rear security spotted it like uh yeah what were your what were your thoughts in the uh, first round really came down to to time is what it felt mm -hmm. like yeah round one my plan was just to play it like a patrol mission i'd have i had one squad in the uh the striker and the rest of the squad was pulling security at the front then I had uh, two moving elements, which I used to rotate and clear the uh, sides of the street left and right. And then I just had Odessa squad, which they did awesome job in my opinion. Just uh, they were covering our rear, they were moving, they were up at the front, they just rotated back. They were calling up contacts left, right, center. It was just it was a lot of moving parts, and uh, it came down to what like two minutes, three minutes at the very end. Yeah, three, three, three and a half minutes, right at the end. It was a uh, very close. Hey. And uh, we're also joined by the uh, the second command, the uh, the other command, uh, D mine. Uh, what were your th so uh, we had a, a question on on uh, uh, for 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 the first round. What was your reasoning behind putting the uh, BRDM hull down, hull down in that uh, area? Uh, well, I'll be honest. I left sightless up to the defensive because I was I wanted to focus more on what the other squads were doing on the outside perimeters. Um, 
but the BRDM was basically there, and if you saw, there, uh, there were sandbags around it to use as, I guess, armor uh, yeah, to a certain yeah. degree. Because um, we knew the striker was coming up on us, so that was basically the reasoning for that. Just use as a turret. And was was your whole as, as the uh, the game went on, we, we sort of just we like we were interpreting your plan as just a delay. Uh, you you had a really really wide defense, and yep, very so, very few people on the point. Yeah. Right? So the plan basically, um, and it almost worked, but uh, basically it was a stall tactic where they. You know they were on the outside perimeters but then we'd know if they slipped past and i had them kind of lay low and purposefully slip past and the reason behind that was once i was expecting jack or i was hoping rather that um the convoy wouldn't have good rear security so i was trying to hit them from behind every single time um so the squads would push in and then kind of net them towards the southwest uh obviously it didn't work but we kind of stalled them long enough and unfortunately, it didn't work out in the end. But that you, was you definitely stalled them out. They definitely almost went down in time. And Google, Google checks the squad actually got walked over. Like they, they literally. Yeah, I, I had them on. just he's, he's stop troop. shooting. Just don't give away the position. Just lay low and have them slip right past on purpose, and then try to hit them. Yeah, the as soon as that happened, uh, and you guys got the lat shut off, they called contacts behind. I was on the hill. And I just start scanning this compound. And I see this medic, and I'm like, "Is that guy looking at me?" I just pull my rifle out and just like, boom, one tap straight to the head. I was like, "Well, can't get me anymore." <laughs> and uh, second second round, D mind you, uh, you walked up on a uh, a squad with your uh, look. I looked like you had two other people in your in your uh, your your command element. And yeah. uh, you went down. What, what what was your thoughts immediately after you went down? It, like? It's funny because as if you saw, um, Rose was saying about something about the door. There should be a door there. And then I was like, uh, this could be an ambush or something. And just in my mind, I was like, this could totally be an ambush. And as soon as we walk out, <laughs> I got killed. So I kind of self jinxed myself. But uh, <laughs> just in the back of your mind. Yeah, I was. I just had a bad feeling and just. There it was, just the whole squad there. Yeah, and props to your uh, your other squad leads for uh, for taking taking charge, taking oh, command, yeah, they getting did that uh, compound assault. That compound yep. assault was amazing to watch. Just the amount of uh, people streaming into the uh, streaming into that building, just surrounded by smoke, just tossing grenades. Yeah, you threw friendly nice. fire. A lot of uh, casualties on both sides, but you were able to come out. Of yeah, we had I think three friendly <laughs> fires, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know what happens? It's it was a close push, but I think the uh, the striker definitely helped because it was on that on the hill and it was just laying down fire the entire time. So that I think that definitely helped with the push. Oh yeah, you were able to uh, get get above that uh, BRD. I mean, it didn't even it did not see it coming at all. That uh. Beard and was caught out in the open, just marked with Google smoke, and uh, yeah, it worked out really nicely. Yep, yeah, it was all thanks to Burns here. And his squad was doing very well. It's good teamwork on everyone's behalf. Uh, Pony, do you have any any questions for them? Um, no, you, you just about covered mine. I was I was interested to find out more about Demine's uh, overall intent for that first round, which we, we definitely did. So. Yeah, I think I think I know everything I need to know. Those were some great rounds there. The first one kind of ran right up to the end. The second one, second one was uh, a little little less close, mostly because of the, where the cache ended up spawning down there in that city. There wasn't much to do with that that elevation difference. Great rounds though, both times. Um, well, that that'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, you, if you want to take part in these events, you should check us out. Squadops.gg. We run we we run these ops three times a week: one on Wednesdays, twice on uh, Saturdays. If you're interested, check us out. Squadops.gg. Sign up for our uh, uh, SOTT basic class and uh, join us at these events.